In this video, we will continue our discussion of applications of the definite integrals, specifically calculating the volumes of solids using cross sections and emphasizing the use of cylindrical disks to do so. In our next example, we'll consider a solid generated when a region is revolved about an axis. When we slice a solid generated by a revolution about an axis, the slices resemble thin cylindrical disks or washers. And let's consider how that, that comes about. Suppose I have an axis of revolution and I have a rectangle where one edge of the rectangle is bordered by the axis of revolution. This top edge will sweep out a circle as that rectangle is rotated about the line, uh, about the axis of revolution. This bottom edge will also sweep out a circle that's parallel to the top. That forms the cross section and then I have a thickness. So therefore, if I want to find the volume of this thin cylinder, I know that I need the area of the base times the thickness, or in this case, the height. The area of the base is simply a circle, where the radius of the circle comes from this, the length of this outer edge to the axis of revolution. I square it, multiply by pi to get the area of the circle, and then I multiply by the thickness. So therefore, the volume of the cylindrical disk will be pi r squared h. Let's consider how a washer results when we uh, take cross sections of a solid. Suppose again, I have an axis of revolution, but this time I have a rectangle where none of the edges of the rectangle are bordered by the axis of revolution. As I rotate this rectangular region about this axis of revolution, this edge that's closest to the axis of revolution will sweep out a hole. Okay? This outer edge will sweep out another circle, and we get something that looks like a washer, where here's a washer. The top surface of the washer is a circle that has what we call an outer radius formed when this outer edge of the rectangle sweeps around the axis of revolution. To find that cross-sectional area, I'm going to take pi times the outer radius squared, but then I must subtract this area of the inner circle, and that inner circle has a radius, which we'll call r sub i, for the inner radius. And therefore, the area of the cross section will be pi times the outer radius squared minus pi times the inner radius squared times the height or the thickness of the washer. And I can change the form of it so it's pi times outer radius squared minus inner radius squared all times height. Consider the region R bounded by the graphs of y equals 2 times the square root of x, x equals 1, and the x-axis. Suppose R is revolved around the line x equals 1. We want to find the volume of the resulting solid. As before, we first considered two-dimensional and three-dimensional sketches of our uh, object. So here's the region. I'll call it R. Here's another graph of the region, but in this time, this time we're going to consider what this region will look like as we resolve around the line x equals 1. Okay? So if I consider what happens to this point as it's revolved around x equals 1, this point's going to swing around here, and then it's going to come back over here, up, maybe take a piece right here in the middle, it's going to swing around and make a circle, we're going to get a smaller circle up here, and here, and so then maybe as I fill in this edge, it's going to look sort of like a, maybe a chocolate chip. Okay. To proceed with solving this problem, I have to consider that when we're calculating volume by cross-section, the cross-sections are always taken perpendicular to the axis of revolution. So that when I partition the interval, my partition is going to be, um, in this case, along the y-axis because that's where my, my cuts will occur. Okay, So I'm going to have my partition at y sub 0, y sub 1, y sub 2. Here's y sub k minus 1 and y sub k. 
uh, up through y sub n, which is at 2 in this case. One goal in finding the volume of the solid is to find the volume of the kth slice. In other words, what happens when this rectangular piece of the region is rotated about the line x equals 1. And so this is where we see our cylindrical disk. The radius of that cylindrical disk is always a positive quantity, and it comes from, in this case, taking this x equals 1 minus this x sub k value, where this x sub k is what happens when I solve uh, y equals 2 times the square root of x for x, and I evaluate that at y sub k. So that's going to be y sub k over 2 quantity squared. So then that radius comes from x equals 1 minus y sub k squared over 4. And I have that noted here. So here's my radius of my kth disk. So therefore, the volume of my kth slice, or delta v sub k, is approximately the area of the kth cross section, which is pi r sub k squared times the width, which is just the change in my y values, y sub k minus y sub k minus 1, to get pi r sub k squared times delta y sub k. But I know that the radius is 1 minus y sub k squared over 4. So that quantity gets squared, multiplied by pi, multiplied by delta y sub k. I want to find the volume of the solid by summing the volumes of the slices. So I get the sum k going from 1 to n of delta v sub k. So I've got the sum k going from 1 to n of pi times the quantity 1 minus y sub k squared over 4 squared delta y sub k. I take the limit of the Riemann sum as the norm of the partition goes to 0, giving us infinitely many very thin slices, which develops into the definite integral of pi times 1 minus y squared over 4, quantity squared, dy, and I take the integral from 0 to 2 because that's the, that's the interval that was partitioned along the y-axis. In order to solve this definite integral, I first expand the polynomial and integrating and evaluating at my endpoints gives me that the volume of the solid is 16 pi over 15 cubic units.